Love my morning coffee. Good morning. It's December the 13th of 2016. We've got some good reading this morning. Again, you know, every single day that I pick up this one-year Bible, <clears throat> I'm looking for a word from God for me. So I remember the struggles I had when I first got started reading the Bible all the way through every year, um, reading the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Psalms, and the Proverbs. And uh, in any of those uh, four categories, there are sections of it that was harder for me to read than other sections. So one of the things I hope to do when I do this Bible study with you is simply to encourage you in those difficult times. I mean, when we pick it up and words jump off the page and, and we get it, um, those are the easy times. And it's the times that we're hungry and we want more and we can't wait for God to speak, but in times when sometimes the reading is, is drier or it's just not quite as clear or maybe we've let ourselves get extremely tired and the message just doesn't jump out at us like it does other times, um, I, I just want to be a catalyst to help you open your spiritual ears to hear from God because I know that he's speaking to you all the time. And in turn, what ends up has happened uh, in the last year since I've been doing this is uh, it's done that same thing for me. It, I love the way that God does that. When he speaks and we hear him and we obey, there's always blessings in our obedience, always. And uh, if you look back early on, it's not any secret that <clears throat> really wasn't anything in me that wanted to get on a live video, especially not 8.30 in the morning. Um, but I felt like this is really what God wanted me to do. And what's ended up happening is um, the same thing I'm wanting to happen for you. You know, if I can be used of God, and if in a moment in time, you've picked up and you're reading a prophecy in Obadiah, and you're going, well, what does that have to do with me? But you listen, and Elizabeth says, well, there was a message I got today. And if that helps <clears throat> you understand and, and it opens your your spiritual eyes and your ears to where you're hearing from God a little bit better than praise be to God and glory to God. It's all for his glorious and it's all to deepen your relationship with the Lord. And what has happened this last year is my relationship with the Lord has been deepened. Um, I love how God does that. So if there's something that God's been speaking to you to do, I want to encourage you. The more you don't want to do it, the more likely it probably is that it's God. I didn't want to get on a video. I didn't want to go live. I didn't want to open myself up because I'm not a theologian. I've not been to seminary. I don't get into these deep, deep meaning, meanings. It's just my life with God on a daily basis, as simple as that can be and as simple as it is. Um, that's all this is. And I want to encourage you in your walk with the Lord. And, and I know... Some of you have told me that it's hard for you to read 15 minutes at a time. Just read what little bit you can read uh, and consider it good for now, for such a time as this, and then keep praying that God gives you that hunger for more of his word because I literally started off only being able to read a sentence or two when I first started. I can remember turning on some of my um, teachers that I was attempting to try to listen to in the car driving down the road in fact, Chris Garrison, that's when Chris Garrison and I uh, met each other because I was driving from Muskogee to Tulsa to work, and I was desperate. I mean, I, you know, I was just brand new back with the Lord and had been away from him myself. He had never left me, but I'd been away from him for many, many years, and, and this was a time when I was, I was learning and I was struggling, and, and I uh, had trouble reading the Bible. <clears throat> And I'd turn on that radio or turn on that CD player 
and I couldn't go five minutes. Five minutes later, I'd look around and think what was just said. Oh, my goodness, my mind's already gone somewhere else, and I couldn't focus. And, and I'm telling you, that struggle is real, but that's when you just simply can't give up. If you've struggled reading through this this year with us, you just can't give up. Don't give up. As I've said before, read the highlighted words. If you've got this Bible in front of you, read the highlighted words. If you don't have this Bible in front of you and you follow along because I read out the scriptures in the morning, you pick just a little bit and start reading. And it, his obedience, is, it's, it's amazing what happens when we obey God. I mean, things just start divinely aligning the way they're supposed to be. If you're somebody that struggled your whole life and you just can't get a break and things just don't seem to be going right, um, this is your first step. Actually, it's your second step. Your first step is to pray. I know I went years that I didn't pray because I thought God was mad at me. And that's a lie from the pits of hell. He was never mad at me. He was never surprised by the bad decisions I make. He didn't look down one day and say, oh, Elizabeth, did you really? Oh, Elizabeth, I never thought. That's not how God is. He, he, he knows the beginning from the end and everything in between, and he's never surprised by us. Um, but his heart is always to have the oneness with us, always. And it starts with, first of all, he wants to hear your voice. And there is no right or wrong way to pray when you first start out. It is just pray to the one and only God that the, is the creator of the universe. And the second step is to pick up this word and get started. Just get started. Don't beat yourself up. Just do the very best. And today I got a word for Elizabeth. I have to assume because he's got me doing these videos that it'll be a word for somebody else. But here's a, another prophet, Obadiah. We're, we're getting close to the end of the Old Testament. We're just about to finish up. We've got 18 more days and we've read all the way through the Bible. And here's Obadiah and he's writing down the vision that was given to him. Thus says the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a report from the Lord, and a messenger has been sent among the nations. Rise up. Let us rise against, uh, against her for battle. Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You shall be utterly despised. The pride of your heart has deceived you. And right then and there, I knew that there's, this is a message for Elizabeth Inman. He, he's telling me. He's warning me not to let my pride rise up and deceive me. I mean, just when we start getting things back on track with the Lord, just when we start, you know, aligning what we do with what he says, uh, God says, then all of a sudden we can start getting proud of ourselves. It was, it's like, oh, I, I mean, oh, Elizabeth's on a Facebook Live. Oh, Elizabeth. <clears throat> had some success uh, raising her daughter. Oh, Elizabeth has had some success in the business God created. Eliz you see what I'm saying? And, and, and this is what helps me because the enemy, the only power the enemy has over us is to deceive us. And one of the ways he'll deceive us is to convince us how good we are, how, how much better we're doing, how, and, and it may be truth that we're doing better, that I'm, I'm listening more, I'm praying more. I've, I've actually read the Bible just a little bit more. But we pick it up, and on December the 13th, 2016, we read the words, or Elizabeth did, the pride in your heart has deceived you, you who live in the clefts of the rock. And it's like, oh, okay, Lord, oh, yes, i got to stay humble. Because the Bible says that those who will humble themselves and pray will be blessed uh, it, it, it's that's just how this works. If that's how simple it is, you're reading a vision from a prophet from way before Jesus Christ was born, and he writes down the words, and all of a sudden, on December the 13th, 2016, I know that God's speaking to me to be real careful about my pride, to just to, to stay humble. And the way I stay humble is I pray, and I tell God, I'm yours. I belong to you. Whatever you want from me, Father, that's what you'll get. Whatever you want and nothing more, nothing less. Uh, that's the way that this works.
Um, and then I want to go forward. There's another message I got in this, in Obadiah uh, chapter 1, verse 15. You know, it's, I found it um, comforting, I guess, to know that many of the sayings that my mom used to raise us uh, by um, that really the world passes them off as old wives tales or tradition or just a, a family tradition of a saying handed down through the generations um, are, are biblically based. There's one of them that's out there. Now I want you to understand clearly, I absolutely do not believe in karma. There is no such thing as karma. Karma is a word that comes from a cult, um, from a uh, religion that is not Jesus-based. I don't believe in karma. Um, however, there is another saying out there that says what goes around comes around. And I never really realized that that was biblically based. But that's another thing that jumped off on, on the page to me today. Uh, chapter 1, verse 15 in Obadiah. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the nations. As you have done, it shall be done to you. Now, is that not saying what goes around comes around? As you have done, it shall be done to you. Your deed shall return on your own head. That is a warning. Now, remember, this is before Jesus Christ. This is before Jesus broke those curses, fulfilled the law, and gave us grace. Um, however, if we're not walking in grace, if we haven't accepted what Jesus Christ has done for us, what goes around comes around. And I don't know about y'all, but there are some things in my past that, well, there are some things in my past that come back around and bit me. Just to be honest with you. There are things that come around to bite me. Um, but praise God, I'm under grace. And now when I read these, I'm understanding how things work. But he's also told us, and we read this at the beginning of the year, uh, in Deuteronomy 30, uh, verse 19, it said, it, God tells us, for this day I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life. So every single day is a, is a choice. We get to choose every single day. Are we choosing life or are we choosing death? Are we choosing blessings or are we choosing curses? Because there are laws that were put into place the day God said, let there be light, and he created everything. There is laws like um, um, gravity. We, we don't have any trouble understanding gravity because we pick up an apple and we drop it. It's going to fall to the ground. Well, there's other laws. There's spiritual laws that was put into place when when God created everything that we see, the world that we live in, and, and we operate under those uh, um, um, on a daily basis. And... God has given us authority and dominion over our world from the get-go. We have authority and dominion since the Garden of Eden over everything that we, we see. We were created to have authority and dominion over everything we see. So for the day of the Lord is near upon all nations, as you have done, it shall be done to you. Your deeds shall return on your own head. So while that verse is not there to condemn us, that verse is there to remind us of who we are in Christ, of our life in Christ, and how we are to treat other people, um, how we are con to conduct our lives in holiness and righteousness by the righteousness of Christ imputed into us by the, the blood he shed for us on the cross. So again, this is just how these scriptures speak to me every morning when I wake up and I read the one-year Bible. And I hope that it blesses you and that if you allow God to open your spiritual ears and eyes, that he has a message for you every single day when you read as well. It's why our time with the Lord each day is so important. And it's not limited to just the 15 minutes in the morning. It should be an ongoing relationship and that I'm driving down the road and I can talk to Jesus because he's riding down the road with me because he's in my heart. That's what this life looks like. It's, it's him abiding in me and me abiding in him, regardless of what's going on around us. So and then we're, we're in the Revelation uh, chapter 4, and this is one of those that in the past has been kind of hard for me. Uh, you start getting into these um, 24 elders clothed in white garment with uh, golden crowns on their head from the throne. I'm in verse 5, chapter 4. 
From the throne came flashes of lightning and peals of thunder, and before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was as if it were a sea of glass like crystal. And you get into these visions that John got, and I'm, I am you go to seminary, I don't have a theology degree, I'm telling y'all, but what, to, what today, what I got from this is that all of that to me represented that God is all in all in all. It talked about the creatures that had eyes all the way around its head. To me, that was symbolic that God sees everything. There's nothing hidden from God, absolutely nothing. And there's another one that, it, that represents the power of God in that he's all powerful. He's sovereign. He's, he's over everything. And, um, and, and then here, here it comes back to all of these things that represents to me who God is, what God is. And, and it says, and four living creatures in verse uh, eight, and the four living creatures, each of them with six wings are full of eyes all around and within and day and night, they never cease to say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God almighty who was and is to come. Whew, and it's a reminder to me about how I'm supposed to be conducting my life in worship of the Holy One. And it's a reminder to me how holy He is. Holy enough that this is the only place in the Bible that you're going to see that three words are spoken in a row. Now, Jesus many times will say things twice. And when He says it twice, I know He's getting my attention. But when it said three times, holy, holy, holy is he, the one who is and the one is yet to come. And it just, it, I, it, it just, it changes me from the inside out in knowing that I am to have that spirit of worship about me all the time. That because he lives in me, I'm always in his presence. And he's so holy. And for something as holy as he is to abide inside of me and to live inside of me, how could I not conduct myself in holiness and righteousness? Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Whew. Hallelujah. The Psalms 132 brought me right back to what I read in the Old Testament about um, pride, because it brings up David. Remember, O Lord, in David's favor, um, all the hardship he endured. Well, most of the hardship David endured was because of his pride. The, the, the biggest fall that David experienced is because he got prideful in uh, his uh, uh, prowess as a, as a king, as a man of, of war, uh, and he and he refused to do what all kings do. He didn't go to war with his men, and he chose to stay home. And the Bible says, in fact, I just read this to uh, Carrie Dawn just this past week in Proverbs. It'll tell us that idle hands is the devil's workshop. And David stayed home and had idle hands, and he went up on the roof and saw Bathsheba uh, bathing and decided that he had to have her. Um, that was pride. And so see how these fit? Uh, the Old Testament was a reminder to Elizabeth, keep your pride in check, lay it at the cross, do not get prideful. And then I'm reading about David and the hardships he endured, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob. Uh, I will not enter my house or get into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber or to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. Jacob. I just love how all the scriptures come together, even though they're broken down from an Old Testament, New Testament, Psalms, and Proverbs. And then Proverbs 29, 24 through 25, the partner of a thief hates his own life. He hears the curse, but discloses nothing. I'm telling you, when you live contrary to the righteousness that's inside of you, it torments you. Guilt torments you. Guilt is derived from the enemy not from God, not for a believer. He doesn't condemn us with guilt. Guilt torments us. The fear of, of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. When I'm doing things contrary to God, fear is a result of it, and it rises up, and it torments me as well. So between the guilt and the fear, 
that I'm not doing what I know I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not living the way I'm supposed to be living. Uh, we're tormented. But those who trust in the Lord is safe. And I trust him when I bow my head and I, and I repent. And I say that, oh, Lord, I'm so sorry that I was prideful. I'm so sorry that I stepped into pride. I'm so sorry that I mistreated my neighbor. I'm so sorry that I abused the person that I work with. I'm, I'm sorry that I snubbed the person at church. Um, I'm sorry, Lord, that I didn't reach out and pray for that person in Walmart that you asked me to pray for. Um, anyway, that's, that's, that's how this word speaks to me. And it's how he wants and longs to speak to you. And the way he'll speak to you is as individual as your thumbprint as individual as the pupil in your eye that not one other person in 7 billion people has an iris in their eye exactly like yours or the tone of your voice. That's how unique your relationship with God is. So be blessed today. Uh, abide in him. Seek him. He's there. He's with you every step of the day, of the way, every step of the day, every step of the way. Um, he never leaves you. You can't be bad enough that God will leave you. And, and so you just can't give up. You just can't give up. You fall, you get right back up and ask God to forgive you and move forward. Uh, he never leaves you. He's with you all the time. And he loves you more than you can ever imagine. And I love you too. So thanks for joining us. And we'll talk again tomorrow morning.